Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. It's official. The UK will restore some diplomatic relations with Iran and said that they are moving forward on opening their embassy in Tehran. The UK shut its embassy in November 2011 after it was attacked by protesters. It then ordered the closure of the Iranian embassy in London. This is just another development in the thawing of relations between the West and Iran, especially in light of President Obama's phone conversation with Iran's new president, Hassan Rouhani, something that hasn't happened since 1979. Now joining us to put all this in context is Gareth Porter. He is a historian and, and, and investigative journalist on U.S. and foreign policy, and he writes regularly for the Interpress Service on U.S. policy towards Iraq and Iran. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Jessica. How are you? So, Gareth, many pundits have expressed skepticism about the so-called charm offensive that President Rouhani's um, been been offering up. What do you make of this? Are what are Rouhani's intentions in light of his past record? First of all, the uh, news media have, in fact, as you said, uh, treated Rouhani as a kind of uh, unknown quantity and uh, questioned whether he can really be relied upon, uh, whether he can deliver, whether he has the trust of the Supreme Leader, whether he has a mandate. All of these questions seem to be swirling around Rouhani. And the tone and the content of the analysis and commentary has been more or less along the lines that we don't really know enough about Rouhani to have any firm grounding in making any uh, assessment of what he's likely to do. And in fact, that is where I think the news media have gone uh, quite wrong in their treatment of Hassan Rouhani uh, since he's been elected president of Iran. Uh, the reason being that he does, in fact, have a very well-documented record specifically on the whole question of Iran's nuclear policy, because he was in charge of the nuclear file from 2003 to 2005. And that was, of course, an extremely crucial period for the development of Iran's nuclear policy. And Rouhani did a superb job uh, from any assessment, uh, any objective assessment of his work uh, on that issue uh, during those two, two and a half years. Uh, and, and so I think what, what we really need to do is revisit that record, and that's what I've just done in a piece that I am publishing with Al Jazeera English this week. Okay. And can you lay out a little bit more about why you think the media, and especially um, Israel, we know Netanyahu has come out and said, of course, that you know we should be very skeptical and things of that nature. Um, why are we getting such backlash um, from, from the press as well as Israel? Well, the first part of the question being, uh, why is the press going, uh, going so wrong on this uh, issue of Rouhani and his record? I think the answer to that is quite simple and straightforward. The news media has no incentive, the commercial news media basically has no incentive uh, to cover this story in depth. And so, as usual, it's sort of skipping over the surface. And the surface really consists of the scuttlebutt in, uh, within the political elite in the United States and uh, among the policymakers who are willing to talk to the press. They're going to express a degree of skepticism, a degree of caution about Rouhani, instead of going into the facts about what he actually did, what he has done uh, as the uh, secretary of the Supreme National Security Council in Iran, as well as the person in charge of Iran's nuclear file. Now, as spe specifically in terms of what he actually did, which we need to be paying attention to, we have to understand that in 2003, Iran's nuclear policy was really in a terrible mess. And it got into that mess because of a couple of factors. One, uh, there had been a certain laxity in the scrutiny, the control of uh, not only the military industrial complex, but the uh, organization uh, for atomic energy, the, the uh, organization that actually handled the nuclear program directly for Iran. And so all of those institutions had had really quite a great deal of freedom uh, to carry out actions which uh, were not authorized uh, in many cases by the central government. 
Um, in the case of the military industrial complex, the military industrial uh, research uh, organizations, there was uh, a great deal of uh, debate and discussion about the whole question of what Iran's nuclear policy really was. I mean, the, the Iranian government had said we're against, uh, the, the president of Iran had said we're against having nuclear weapons, we're not interested in nuclear weapons, uh, that they are uh, not consistent with Islamic uh, jurisprudence. But there had been a debate within the government, uh, and I say, as I say, among uh, the military research community about what that really meant in terms of a capability uh, for a uh, nuclear program and even for nuclear weapons. And some were arguing that uh, having a capability uh, meant, a nuclear capability meant that you knew how to make a nuclear weapon, even if you had no intention of actually building a weapon. And so some of these organizations and individuals, individual researchers, were in fact carrying out uh, research, research projects that related to nuclear weapons. And although there must have been some vague awareness that this was going on, it's clear that the central government, the president and Rouhani himself as secretary of the uh, Supreme National Security Council, didn't really know precisely what was going on. They had no uh, idea of the extent of it. So what Rouhani did when he came in was to try to reassert the good faith of Iran with regard to its no nuclear weapons policy and to try to convince the West that it was serious about that. And it, first of all, he uh, opened up a new policy with regard to the International Atomic Energy Agency of complete uh, forthrightness of, of reporting everything uh, that had been done in the past and that was being done currently, uh, turned a real page in that regard. Secondly, he started negotiating with the European three, the UK, Germany, and France, on a uh, long-term agreement, uh, and in principle, agreed that uh, Iran would, would, uh, would stop, at least uh, for some period of time, voluntarily, its enrichment activities. And thirdly, and most importantly, what he did was to call a halt, uh, order all of the researchers to stop working on anything having to do with nuclear weapons. Basically sent out a circular saying, we want to know exactly what's been going on, anything that has been going on with regard to nuclear activities, and any activities that are ongoing have to halt. So that was an extremely important initiative. Uh, that, that's something that has not been registered at all in the news media. Okay, let's continue this conversation in part two of our discussion. We'll talk more about domestic politics in Iran and the relationship between President Rouhani and the Supreme Leader Khomeini. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Gareth. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.